Okay guys, this is the first thing I've written in 30 years. So here it goes. Useful idiots working in government positions behind the scenes, oiling the gears that grind the blood and bones of the zombie cattle masses. Those who can't keep up will voluntarily relinquish their sovereignty and live off the tit of the government hog, giving that fat sow full compliance. Or on the other hand, they could seize the moment which it seems these opportunities arise when we fall to our lowest point to begin the detachment and healing process, dropping the illusion and walk in truth. From observation, it appears the majority will fall into utter despair and give the rest of their lives over to food, drugs, alcohol, and whatever other idols offer them a brief refrain from the misery. Ironic when considering the misery comes from not being accepted in social classes, failing to keep up with the Joneses, or the real mindfuck of not being able to keep a roof over their heads, lights on, and food in the fridge. This is all a construct to keep the slaves in a perpetual state of lack, fear, and desire, consumption and material possessions being necessary for the ego's will and purpose of existence. Such a shallow and fleeting purpose to a divine existence, chained to a ravenous beast that is never satisfied, enslaved voluntarily to abusive social constructs and toxic environments. The invisible bondage so easy to dismiss as the cause of his disease and even easier to blame on still yet some invisible genetic misfortune that requires a miraculous pill made by other egoic profit-driven min minions. This miracle drug allowing them to continue on in their misery whilst draining them of cognitive function and laying a thick blanket over their empathy and what it means to be human. I'll quote Albert Camus here. The only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. There is no freedom in a life of consumption. Once consumed, eventually, no immediately, there is lack which brings a desire, no a necessity as the ego sees it, for more. This cycle does not end. The Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, consumption causing the necessity for more, the rat race, the hamster wheel, insanity. This whole consumption mindset is a program, a construct, a carefully crafted prison never offering its victims an opportunity to see the madness in such a way of life as they are all encompassed by it. The perpetual will of servitude to whatever is being consumed, whose only mechanism of survival are the group thinking fearful lemmings that refuse to end their insane march toward destruction. They deserve it, both the bread and circuses and the rope that hangs them. The idols and abusive hierarchies of power they worship are the same reason for their poisonous environments and soulless deaths. These minions have never been conscious. No, a conscious being who has recognized their power would never freely give it up for self-defeating habits in a life that is only bearable through the constant need of dopamine hits and distraction. The mind cannot bear it. They are on autopilot. This state of mind imposed upon most at birth due to their parents, acting as agents of the state, refusing to acknowledge the wholeness of the life they brought into this world. Instead, due to their own enslavement, this pair that rents, this beautiful soul, will spend the years stripping it of its sovereignty and forcing it into a fight-or-flight response. This biological survival mechanism will be so enforced and ingrained into the mind of this innocent being that it will create a fortress called the ego, and depending on how severe and per pervasive the toxic abusive programming enforced upon it may create thousands of altars who stand guard outside the gates. This castle building, necessary for its survival, takes so much focus and energy that the child never matures as the safety of the castle becomes its one focus and the comfortability of its surroundings become a maze in which time gets lost. As the years pass outwardly, physically, this human becomes what to the eye one would call an adult. Such a mask is the final doning of the costume that hides the scared child within. Akin to a feral cat never grasping what constitutes a safe environment, 
These humans have relented completely to this false character, the ego. Anytime the true self would peek beyond the castle walls to get a glimpse of the outside world, the ego would quickly usher them back behind the curtain. No, the ego would say, you stay here where it's safe and I will take care of the unknown. It's dangerous out there. Let me handle these things as that is why you created me in the first place. And as all scared children were taught to obey these false authority figures, it conceded for far too long as it forgot. The authentic sovereign being yielded themselves and never came back for reclamation. They allowed this proxy king to fight their battles and found the crown too burdensome to bear. So while some forgot due to space and time, others found it easier to allow this character of their own creation to handle business while they were on a permanent vacation in the deep abyss. I'll quote now from Vaclav Havel. The real question is whether the bright future is always so distant. What if it has been here for a long time already, and only our own blindness and weakness have prevented us from seeing it around us and within us, and kept us from developing it? This being the idea I have been contemplating for quite some time now, what if our opportunity to free ourselves is and always has been right in front of us this whole time? All that is required is for us to remember to trust ourselves, to remember what, that we came into this world whole, needing nothing but a safe space and acceptance in order for this physical avatar to fully develop, to remember that we are all we need, to remember that oh so long ago we had summoned this imposter, the ego, who served us at our weakest moment as a fearless warrior. To remember he, tr he ruled only by proxy, and we were the true king. We merely need to reassert our authority and put him back in his place, on the shelf as a memento to our survival. He's been operating this vessel as it has sailed the high seas. We have allowed him to be in control of the wheel of fate for far too long. He has become addicted to the road of life, traveling it as he sees fit, grinding the gears recklessly as his only concern was each moment, and the only moment he thrived in were the wheels screeching dead man's curves as that is what made him feel most alive. Never pulling over for a tune-up or to check the oil. Instead, pedal to the floor with no intention of slowing down unless the vehicle required a quick, a quick refuel and then right back behind the wheel again, window down, the rush of wind keeping his wild eyes open. We need to have him pull over and open the trunk where we safely placed our authentic self so long ago, in order to climb out and reassume our rightful position. But the ego, like any power-obsessed tyrant, does not acquiesce. No, he has become so addicted to the driver's seat and being in control of what direction this avatar takes. Removing him will be an arduous task. Most will find this process so daunting their attempts at freeing themselves from the trunk will end as quickly as they began. Finding the comfort and safety of this tight, dark space to be all too familiar. They will reserve themselves to their position. After all, the ego hasn't been that bad of a pilot, has he? Hard to tell when the only perspective you have is inside of such a small box. But for those souls who are ready, there is a deep and gnawing anxiety, a sickening claustrophobia of unbearable relentlessness. These souls are searching desperately for the trunk release. But so much time has passed in that dark space where time doesn't seem to exist at all. No, this is not the fine German engineered vessel it once was. Forgetting this machine was built prior to the advent of such a safety device, how much longer will the search continue for that non-existent, effortless means of escape? Most souls will give up upon this realization and accept their lowly, albeit safe, position. But not this one. No, this one is ready. This one realizes it just had dozed off for too long. Lulled into a dream state, trapped in the illusion of comfort and safety. Resigned to allowing another to navigate the mountainous, untamed roads of life. Upon waking, the soul remembers. It knows it knew all along. No true soul would ever consent to another 
more or less a fictional made up character to pilot, it, pilot its avatar, knowing full well that in the end it would be the sovereign, that it would be he, the sovereign king, who would be held responsible for the legacy left behind. How long have I been asleep? Realizing now there is no time to waste. Realizing the urgency of the situation. What? How? It's a fool's errand to continue searching for this trunk release that never was. Alternatives? No sense in yelling. Most likely the madman at the wheel will just pull over and spray some kind of mind-nubbing, sleep-inducing agent through the keyhole and it will be right back to the dream state where time doesn't exist. No, think. It will have to be a quick exit, one that will take this maniac by surprise. Seems only one option, the back seat. If the back seat is kicked forward, then access to the cabin will be gained. But what then? It appears this whole operation is going to only be successful with brute force. That is all the ego understands. After all, that is how he was created. No matter, all that a supreme being needs is an opportunity. If I can at least be in a better position for attack, that is all that is required. Taking a deep breath and pulling both legs back, here goes. The only concern now is hopefully this wild man in the driver's seat doesn't freak out and wreck the vehicle before control of the wheel is transferred. After all, the ego is used to the quiet, unquestioned navigation of this vessel. I wonder if he even forgot I was back here. That would certainly help with the element of surprise. Yet again, it could throw him into an automatic defense. Isn't that how he was created in the first place? His expertise is defense. Oh wow, the mind fuck is too much. Enough of this planning. Every moment that goes by is another chance there won't be a next with such a careless being that throws all caution to the wind and disregards any warning of danger. Focus. Okay, one more deep breath. This is it. Remember, you are the rightful king, and this charlatan was merely a temporary proxy defense against a cruel world in which you were brought, at the time physically incapable of your own defense. Summoning all the strength that had never been realized up to this point, one, two, three, and with everything flowing through the veins of supremacy, boom, the back seat went flying forward. Shit, immediately blinded. Didn't take that into consideration. Forgetting that the blinding rays of the sun took some time to get used to, especially after such an extended period without its permeating light. Even with eyes closed, the rays seemed to burn through the protective eyelids and light what lies beneath with an inextinguishable fire. On the other hand, while losing all sense of sight, the rush of fresh air is revitalizing, and one who has been enclosed in such a dark space for so long cannot disregard the natural warmth the sun gave. A renewed feeling of intense vigor coursed through this supreme being. Obviously startled, the heretofore unchallenged captain let out a, what the? That was all there was room for in such a small space of both time and place. Before another utterance could slip out from the deceptive lips of this creature at the helm, his reign was over. Blindly grasping one hand on the wheel and the other around the throat of this imposter. Crushing the windpipe of this demon with a grip that was uncompromising. The life slipped away from him as fast as it had been given. And just that quickly it was over. He exited as quickly as he had reported for duty countless time ago. As the vehicle slowed, the soul's eyes adjusted. By the time movement stopped, sight was fully restored. Opening the door and tossing the lifeless form onto the side of the road, the soul reclaimed the driver's seat it had conceded, a position that felt familiar, stretching out and taking the deepest inhale ever. With it coming the innate realization of the responsibility that had been abdicated so long ago. First things first thought the now fully realized soul, maintenance.